Welcome to our weekly look back at the great tough guys, the great race drivers, races, cars, and moments in open wheel racing. You know, when we talk about the great drivers of all time, obviously Foyt, Andretti, Michael and Mario, Bobby Unser, Al Unser, Rick Mears, Johnny Rutherford, Gordon John Cock, and at Scott Dixon, who we're going to add to that list, he's certainly got up there. But one guy that doesn't get mentioned a lot, and probably because he hasn't raced since 1966, is Roger Ward. But if you are around to watch this guy race, or you watch a Dick Wallen video, or you read Michael O'Leary's book, you realize that he was one of the greats of all time. And it didn't start out that way. Ward's first five or six years, he bounced around, didn't get really good rides, didn't have a great reputation, crashed quite a bit. And in 1957, Herb Porter and the Walcott Special gave him a chance, and he won a couple races in 57 and 58. Well, that got A.J. Watson's attention and his owner, Bob Wilkie. So they hired Ward in 1959, and the three W's formed Leader Card Racing, and in the next six years went on a tear like very few people ever went on in IndyCar Racing. In six years, they won 18 races. They won the Indy 500 in 59 and 62. They won two national championships in 59 and 62. Three times they were run up in the national championship to A.J. Foyt. And Foyt, during that same time, won about 24 races. Ward won 18. Those were the two guys to beat. If you, if you beat Ward, you had to beat Foyt and vice versa. So they, when, when A.J. showed up, I mean, the yardstick was Roger Ward. That's who you had to, that's who you had to handle, and he was the man. So the thing that's amazing about their record from 1959 to 1964 is that in Indianapolis they finished first, second, third, fourth, first, and second. In six straight years, the worst finish they ever had was fourth. And amazingly enough, you know, Roger missed the race in 1965. Uh, they just couldn't get the, the Moog special working. It wasn't, it was just, it was an evil car and they had a lot of problems. So he quit leader card before the season was over. 66, he shows up for his last Indy 500 with John Meekham's team, George Bignani's the chief mechanic. They win Trenton in April, right before they come to Indianapolis. That was, Rod, that was Roger's last victory, his 26th win. And then in the race, he's having handling problems, so he pulls in and goes, pulls the car right in the gasoline alley and tells Bignani and the crew, I promised myself if this wasn't any fun, I'd quit. Wasn't any fun out there today, I'm done. Walks away. In the prime of his career, pretty much. I mean, he he's, he won a race that year, so it wasn't like he was over the hill. He just didn't have any fun and said it was time to move on. I'm not sure he really liked the rear engine cars like he did the roadsters and the dirt cars. But the guy was phenomenal on the dirt or the pavement. And as good as he was at Indianapolis, he won every dirt race. Sacramento, Springfield, Syracuse, DuCoin, uh, uh, the Indianapolis, the Hoosier 100, Phoenix when it was still dirt. So every place there was a dirt race... Ward won, and Jim Cheney, one of the great racing photographers of all time, said he thought Ward was the best he ever saw on a one-mile dirt track. Not only was he fast, his car control is amazing. I think he brushed the wall twice in six years. Never got upside down, never crashed, and Watson, Ward, and Wilkie were one of the great combinations of all time, and it obviously put him on the map. But when you look at all the great drivers and you think about their reputations and their, and their, you know, their body of work, well, AJ won 67 races and had like 369 starts. Mario won 52 races and had like 406 starts. Roger Ward won 26 times and only had 150 starts. So his winning percentage was pretty impressive, especially in those six years when he was Watson and Wilkie. And uh, I got to know him a little bit, and Roger Ward Jr. is one of my buddies, and we reminisce sometimes about how good his old man was, and obviously it was the media coverage wasn't what it is today, but... Uh, if you watched racing in the 60s in the golden era, you knew Roger Ward was one of the best ever. This is Robin Miller. If I don't get snowed in, snowed out, freezed on, I'll see you kids next weekend for some more here at racer.com. Thanks for watching.